So now it's Thursday morning, feeling good, and people are asking, hey, are you gonna do the ceremony with Taita? And Taita is an amazing um, Colombian shaman, and he only comes maybe three or four months to Arrhythmia, and he does these uh, ceremonies in the kind of traditional way. And I was like, I don't know, you know, I'm good kind of thing. And he was doing one-on-one -on -one interviews, and I thought that was so interesting. And that he was gonna, he want. I said, why is he doing interviews? Because uh, he, he wants to see what your intention is, and you know, if you're okay to do the medicine and stuff. I was like, cool. I'm like, hey, maybe I'll just go to the um, interview and see what he thinks because you know I'm leaving on the I'm leaving on the Saturday. We, our our whole team is leaving at 10 a.m. Uh, on Saturday morning. I heard the ceremony ends at like eight or nine. I'm not gonna sleep like, and it's just like, whoa, maybe I shouldn't do this kind of thing. And so I go to the interview, and uh, it's Tida. Uh, Mitra, Carlos, and um, basically his team that's there. And I go and I sit down, and they're already in a conversation, real like talking. And it was so interesting because I got to be a fly on the wall for a second about the other side. And they were asking Taida, like, hey, um, how do you know when to sing this ikoros? Or um, I, we noticed that you blew more smoke here in this moment uh, than in another one. Like, why did you do that? And so they were talking about the other side of it. And it was so interesting as like a journalist and stuff to hear all of that. And then they turned to me and they're like, oh, Raji, sorry, you know, we just had to have a quick convo. I was like, no, no, no it's all good. And so Tida has like the best smile. This guy's like so happy. He was like riding his bike throughout Rhythmia and stuff. And we were just like, oh, he's, he's so cool. <laughs> Um, so he asked me like what's your intention and stuff so I said you know I, I want to reconnect uh, with my soul and uh, the founder of Rhythmia Jerry had done an amazing talk um, I think Wednesday morning and I was sad in it and I talked to him after and I just cried because I could I could feel something um, that wanted reconciliation you know and um, I just I wanted it so when I talked to Taita I said you know I want soul reconnection um, I'm looking for healing and I want the medicine to show me everything that I cannot see about myself and he's like beautiful great great intention um, cool and I said hey by the way I have to leave on Saturday do you think I'm going to be okay and he's like yeah yeah don't worry well we can do your healing earlier on uh, in the in the in the ceremony and you know you'll be fine and I was like okay I didn't quite know what that meant but I was like okay cool um, so that was great and now Friday morning comes and I'm still like I don't know Friday morning comes and I see Brandy at breakfast and Brandy's like so today's the day Raj like are, are you ready like are you doing this and I was like yeah you know I'm not sure and she's like what she's like no you have to do this She's like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like, when are you gonna go into the jungle in Colombia and do this with Taita? He's here now, like, take advantage of it and just do it. And I was like, okay, fine, you know what, you're right. And I, I, I connected with it and it's like, okay, hey, this is a once in a lifetime thing, like, go for it. So I said, fine. And uh, so I stopped again eating uh, really early that day and the ceremony was at eight o'clock. I rolled in a little earlier. Um, uh, two, no, one of my uh, co-workers did it with me and so we both go choose our bed. She went on all the way on the other side of the shala. I went on in the same kind of room. He had a team of like maybe 12 people and there was like eight shamans and the rest were just like helpers, like angels walking around and I was like, wow. And I walk in and it's like beautiful. 60 people in this ayahuasca ceremony. Everyone's really looking good. I, I was wearing all white and um, it was just, it felt good. Like it felt like a, it was an ayahuasca party. Everyone was kind of like mingling at first and chatting and, and all this stuff. Um, so I had chosen a bed close to where I had chosen on the Wednesday. And um, I, uh, I sat beside a, or I laid down beside a girl named Jessica and I made friends with a woman named Annette and we were discussing like, hey, how come some of the beds had their names on it and others didn't? And we were like, oh, because Annette had her, her name on it. And we're like, oh, we don't know. Uh, I guess we'll find out later or something. I don't know. And so the ceremony starts. Rules are given. Here are the bathrooms. You know, um, there's not really much rules, actually. <laughs> there was a fire outside going on. There's a fire pit. And um, I guess if you needed anything, you know, the, the helpers and the shamans there to help you, really. 
And so the ceremony starts. Um, I'm very nervous at this point because I know the brew is different, the healing is different, the amount of people around me, everything was different uh, right from the get-go. So I was like, okay, this is going to be a completely different or new, new experience from Wednesday. Um, and so we start the ceremony and oh and there was a live band so i was like this is going to be an epic night because there's a live freaking band music awesome so they call for the first drink and all the newbies kind of go first time drinkers uh go up and then um you know everyone else kind of goes up so i'm waiting in line and i'm like looking it's kind of dark and stuff and Tida has a flashlight because he wants to see your face and because he remembers and stuff Oh, and when we were in the interview, uh, someone from his team was actually writing things down. So uh, what, what was happening with the interviews is that Tida, okay, Tida wants to know your intention because in the ceremony, the medicine knows exactly what you need to heal. He can see what's going on. So what you think you need is there and then the medicine is there and it knows exactly what you need and he is the bridge between the two to uh f to help facilitate all of that so i'm waiting in line i'm looking at the cups and stuff cool cute little white cups no problem i get to the front and he like looks at me and he's like okay and then he goes back and he pours comes back with this like massive white cup <laughs> and i was like okay cool and the brew looked different. It was only one drink this time, not two. And it was like deep red. And he gives it to me. He blesses it. I look at it. I do my own blessing on it. And I look down at the cup and I say, this is a forever drink. Once I take this, the medicine is always with me. And I downed it. It tasted so bad. So bad. They were offering water to people. I opted out. I went back to my uh, my bed. I had my own water, put it in my mouth, swished it around. Didn't drink it. Um, they say not to drink it, drink water right, right away. So you know the medicine can kind of like get in there. And uh, so I swished it around in my mouth a bit and like spit it out. And then I was like, cool. Here we go. I'm gonna just put my eye mask on and I'm gonna see cool like fractals and sacred geometry and stuff like no problem um none of that happened like none of that and right away people started losing it like annette was one of the first people to uh really just go for it and just purge and she had like five shamans on her and then there was this other girl that started um feeling really really sick and it was really intense because she was like uh someone help me and i was like oh my god what's happening <laughs> i was so afraid and uh so again like three more shamans went up to her and were like helping her doing the ecodos and like you know uh with sweet water and stuff and i was like holy shit like this is really intense and then someone started laughing and then there was a, someone that started crying and i was like okay um this is gonna be really intense and i was like okay hey, stop focus on yourself like close your eyes like everyone's on their own journey and like do yours kind of thing so i tried to lay down and like just breathe and like go in I didn't feel anything for a while and then I started feeling so sick in my stomach like really really bad like I thought I had to go to the bathroom went to the bathroom nothing happened came back and um, just feeling just really 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 sick and then I was like okay I finally I, I needed to, to purge I got over the bucket and then I just I threw up and the smell coming back was just gross and that made me even more sick and then i just like sat laid back down in my head i was like why did i do this <laughs> and what, like i feel really really sick right now but i was like hey it's all part of it it's all good you're gonna be okay so tried to close my eyes and like just you know be there with the journey and i was like where the f is the music like why is there no music that's playing because the music helped me last time and the only music that was happening was the ikaros that the shamans were going around and singing to people and so the, the creepy thing that happened was that i would close my eyes and like it then the, the sound would get really really loud and then it would go really really quiet but then it would slow down and then it would speed up really fast and like 
it would just happen like that and I got I started to feel really really afraid and like more and more people were like losing it a little bit and I, I was just feeling really 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 sick and I started to notice that I and I ripped off my eye mask now because I'm like this is not working um like this is not working so I need to figure something out and um I started realizing like so I would feel really, really sick and then someone would lose it. I would feel really, really sick and then someone would start crying or something. And so I, I raised my hand and I was like, help, I need a helper. And so uh, this beautiful angel of a woman came to me and I said, please take me outside. I need to go outside. And mind you, if people are walking around, someone's going to the bathroom, like just people outside by the fire and stuff. And I'm like, I need to go outside, like get me out of here. So she helped me outside, I'm wobbly now, and I get on the earth. Oh my God. I get on the earth. I'm just feeling, feeling the air, and I was feeling the earth uh, under me, and I was on all fours, and she had brought my bucket because I was feeling really, really sick. And I looked over, and she had brought my water, and I was like, bless you, thank you, God, for you right now. And I felt something was happening. Something, something really profound was happening in, in all of this kind of like darkness, chaos. So we're there and my friend Travis, I found out after it was him, <laughs> but so we're there and someone is screaming inside like really loud. Like I literally thought someone was going to get exercised and you know, I thought Tida was like, I don't know, like I didn't know what was happening. I just knew that someone was screaming so loud inside and it sounded like an exorcism and I was so scared and very childlike this innocence I turned to the the woman and I said I'm scared and she's like I understand I said why is he screaming is are they helping him like what's happening why is this happening and she's like everyone is on their own journey he's being helped and like everyone's going to go through things and I said, okay, I understand. And something happened in that moment when I, when I got outside. I felt better and I felt this like reconnection starting to happen, this childlike innocence. Something happened when I was four years old and my soul left my body in a way. I was emotionally vacant for years and years and years and years and years. And I couldn't feel myself. That's why it was it was really easy to for me to do kind of fucked up things to myself because I couldn't really feel it. And I would take on other people's emotions and they would feel great after talking to me because I just like took everything in. But then I was just like rocked, you know, like feeling so much and not knowing how to deal with it because I couldn't feel myself. And this was the reconciliation that was happening because my spirit, my soul was coming back in a way, this, this part of me that, that felt like it was missing. For so long, and I really feel like this is kind of like the root of addiction because we search and we search and we search for something to fill that void. And I'm crying because it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> So we search and we search to, for something to, f to fill that void, whether, whether that thing is alcohol or sex or drugs or people or food or books or self-help, whatever it is, it's this constant search. And so bringing back that innocence that I felt like was gone at such a young age it was amazing because I, I, I looked up and I looked at the trees and I looked at the stars and I saw everything with I saw everything with new eyes almost like I was seeing it for the first time and it was beautiful it was magical 
and I and I just kind of like was there <laughs> and now I was feeling so much better like so much better I felt like I had gone over a, a hump of some sort now I have a smile on my face and she she had to leave she's like um, I'm gonna go check on somebody else and I'll be back and I said okay <sighs> And I realized, like, um, I was feeling so much stuff in there. So everyone, I was feeling everyone's things. This is why I would feel really sick and something would happen. I would feel really sick and some, somebody would go through something. And um, I needed out. I needed out of that. And she comes back and I'm feeling, like, strong and I'm feeling happier. And I was like, man, I'm so happy you're here. I don't think I could have done this without you. And she just smiled. And I was like, wait a minute. Yes, I can. Yes, we all can. I was like, we, we, we have the capacity. We have all the tools within us to help ourselves first. You know, uh, it's by design. Uh, of course, there's a mechanism um, by God or source or whatever you want to call it to, to help ourselves first. And I was like, thank you so much. I'm so happy you're here. But I, I don't think I needed you here. And there's like this first kind of like realization and shift. And she just smiled and we hugged and it was amazing. And I said, okay, I think I'm ready to go back inside. And she's like, okay. And so I went back to, I went back to my bed and I just kind of uh, laid down. And now I wasn't so bothered or I, I didn't feel um, so rocked by other people's journeys anymore. And I laid there and if anyone saw me they must have they would have thought like this girl is cuckoo because there I was laying on my side with my blanket looking off into a corner and just like smiling and like every so often I would be like <laughs> and I would giggle because I was just downloading I was getting it I was I, I was getting so much information and I saw I connected so deeply with my purpose here on on this planet in this life form as a human being right now and being a storyteller and a communicator and conveying this sweetness to life that's there that's always been there and that we can tap into at any moment and it's all about choice we always have a choice and what are you going to choose and there's this cosmic party that's happening and we all have a spot uh, with our name on it there and it's just waiting for us to come and join and it, we are co-creating all of this all of this it's I, I saw the fabric and how every choice I make um, influences so much stuff and I felt so part of life I there was no more separation no more separation I am life I am one with life um, I am a creator we are co-creating all of this and I felt so amazing amazing I had my journal beside me and I started writing actually I actually ended up writing like a bunch of pages like and it, it what I realized it was a it was a way to re release I'm a journalist through and through right I, I was documenting everything that I was going through and seeing I was just there and so i started off writing uh some notes to myself like um uh this is the work i i was putting in the work of life right now and like sh like getting rid of all past conditioning and, and coming to um present moment and to let it happen it's so beautiful um oh and one thing i said you must listen okay so one thing that got me through that really really scary dark uh, moment was a voice that same voice came back and said take Waheguru Satanam to your heart take Waheguru Satanam to your heart and I did I took it straight to my heart I took it straight to my heart and I said it over and over and over again and I felt so protected and powerful why Guru Satanam is a Sikh mantra that I've grown up with learning and I still say it every day with my mala and it's so powerful and I can't believe that came to me in that moment and it gave me so much power and strength and protection that I forged through with the rest of the night and um, I, I wrote it's okay to come back 
uh, it's safe, uh, your home, your love, I love you. And like, I felt like my, my, my soul had come back. She came back and she, you know, she wasn't leaving. It wasn't because it, for in that moment when I was four, it wasn't safe to be me anymore. It wasn't safe. So I, I had to become somebody else in order to um, get the, get the, survive. It was a survival mechanism too. Our, 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 our minds want to protect us. Our brains want to protect us, right? We have to survive. And one of the um, surviving mechanisms or defense mechanism was to disassociate. I was a master at disassociation and just like um, doing things and just kind of like detaching a little bit. But I'm happy to report she's back. She hasn't left. It's 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 wonderful. Um, but going back to the story and writing, and then I put the journal away and I kind of just sat there. And then I sat up and I was like, I need to witness this. I'm I, this something epic is happening right now, and I need to see. So I got up and I started walking, and walking, and I, and I was looking and I was walking. And I saw so much beauty in everything and everyone. You know, someone was um, throwing up so hard and somebody was crying. Someone was just like rocking back and forth. Someone was just like passed out and it was beautiful. Like I, f I saw like souls trying to like fight through and egos dying. And I felt like I could do anything. And I walked and I and I just walked through the beds and everything. And I, I held my tender heart. And I walked and I gave love and I smiled and I, I, I went up and I sat right beside Tida because I wanted to. I felt drawn to and he was doing his healings and I sat there like a cat and I just watched and I listened and I observed and I, and I took it all in and then I got up again and I walked to my friend. I, she was out and like just I gave her love and I saw Travis the gentleman who had been screaming earlier and he was doing much better and he was just kind of lying there and so much beauty and I, I, I encountered some of the helpers and stuff and I saw Tara the shaman from the Wednesday night and I said Tara um, very childlike like this is the thing as I was walking I was just like wow just like a child would, seeing something for the first time with new eyes, like so much wonder. And I said, Tara, um, I'm hungry. Uh, do you have any food? And she's like, come. And she took my hand and she took me outside to the fire. And she said, eat. And I said, okay. And so I ate the fire. I ate the stars. I ate the wind. I ate the earth. And it nourished me. And so I did. I ate. I ate the fire, I ate the stars, I ate the earth, and it nourished me. It filled me up. It nourished me in a way that I never imagined it could. And it was incredible. And lots of things were happening in my like stomach, womb, kind of uh, uh, sacral chakra uh, area. Lots of things. And they called them the spiritual surgeons. And I could feel like things happening. Like I would go to the bathroom and like one drop of pee would come out. Okay. And it was just like release any way possible kind of thing. And, um, I, and then I would keep walking around. I felt like I was just like shiny, glowy thing. When I was just walking through the amount of times people had come up to me that night and said, you are so beautiful was unbelievable and i saw the beauty in them and i was like i see you i see you and they saw me and it was just the most incredible feeling <laughs> so then the night's continuing and finally the music started oh my goodness the music finally started and the band started playing and oh man i got up and like i sat right in front of the band my my white skirt laid out in front of me my hair was open i was wearing all white like i said and my hand was just going i started drawing pictures i started writing some more stuff and um some of the things that i that i had wrote 
uh, where uh, we are all helpers. It's so beautiful. There's so many times that I just kept writing, it's so beautiful, it's so beautiful. Um, I said, I love it all. Relax into life. I felt like when I was getting all that information, uh, such an ease it was such a relief because i didn't I, f I felt like i didn't have to try so hard in life you know it was always this like struggle with me always and like and it was really overthinking and um i did a story uh about ayahuasca and Taida had mentioned that the illness that uh we're all suffering from right now in the modern world is overthinking um and we our our minds go too much and um thought was a tool that we could use uh, to interact with life, but now it's taken over, too, it's too much, and it's causing lots of stress and illness. And so connecting with this ease in life that I had already chosen everything, I chose already, so all I have to do is just live and, and, and feel and just kind of go with, it because it's all good and you chose everything to trust yourself and have faith that um, you made the right decision because that's the decision that you made and it's all good no second guessing no self-doubt just go just do kind of thing and not having that struggle was such a beautiful uh, release uh, be kind and gentle with yourself uh, like a beautiful innocent child of life thank you my task no, my pleasure um, to be a storyteller because it's a choice that I made in every single moment and every single moment is a choice um, and we have to choose. Are you going to choose to stay with your spirit and your soul? Are you going to choose external uh, temptations that are always going to kind of drag you out? Or are you going to stick with yourself and the, the truth that's inside because the truth doesn't need you to believe in it to exist. It's just always there. Don't try so hard. And it's like, I get to convey this? Like, how lucky am I <laughs> that I get to do this? This is so cool. And to stay with presence. And the way that I, in my life, uh, my practice to stay with uh, what's my dry or fruit, I guess, is yoga and meditation. It's so important for me because that's where I can get my, um, I can fill my well up even more. So now the ceremony's still going. I'm, you know, enjoying the music, um, walking around and like just taking it all in. Um, you know, I'm thanking the helpers. I'm watching them. I'm like, God bless you guys. They're amazing. They're, I saw them like with people and like just helping them come out of that darkness, you know? And so I went to go lay back down and see, you know, um, if anything, you know, just wanted to come up or whatever. So I laid there, put my eye mask on, and uh, nothing, you know, I was just there. And then my, I, I needed something, like, I needed something. Water wasn't enough. And so I ripped off my eye mask. Maybe it's like three in the morning now. And I raised my hand again. I was like, help. And a shaman comes over. And I was like, I, I need something, some something sweet i don't know i need something and he's like ah i got the perfect thing for you i'm gonna do a healing on you and i said okay and what had happened was that he he's like you can sit up if you want and so i sat up just like this and i closed my eyes and i had the biggest smile on my face because he was he was doing his thing he was singing the ikados and he was uh, uh spraying sweet water on me and it made so much sense because there was so much bitterness so much bitter had come out so much bitter was around me that i was craving this like beautiful sweetness and as he's like doing his thing and with uh the leaves and the song and the sweet water it literally felt like he was sealing my soul back in and she was never leaving and it was just so beautiful and epic and uh he's finished and i said thank you so much that was amazing thank you thank you thank you and he left and then i continued to just enjoy my night i talked to people outside by the fire and you know we talked about how beautiful this all is and um how amazing you know this is and i remember going up to carlos uh, one of tida's team members and i said can i always feel like this like 
can I always feel like this? Because I felt like I can. And he laughed and he's like, you know, it's your choice. He's like, you can choose to stay with the divine, you know, and you can always tap into the medicine at any moment. It's always with you. And I said, great. And I just kept walking with it. I had the biggest smile on my face and that smile never left my face until, and I didn't sleep the whole night. The whole night I didn't sleep. The ceremony ended around, I think, 8, 7.30, 8 a.m. And then uh, towards the end, they had called everybody up in front of Taita in a line. And uh, there were, people went up in batches. And there was just like this epic healing that happened. And Taita was going through the line and doing the ikados. And someone else was spraying sweet water. And, you know, they were making sure like you are good to go, um, you know, from all of this. And what's yours is yours. And what's not yours is cleared. And, and all of that good stuff. Because energetically, men, and it was intense and uh, we, we found out after that because there was a ceremony the next night and Taida had relayed after that that ceremony was uh, and there was unusually high um, bitterness or not negativity but it was just like a really intense ceremony and you know we all made it through and it was just epic <laughs> it was such a, a beautiful experience my life has not been the same after that so uh, the biggest thing was I was so afraid of coming back to Toronto because I was just gonna revert back to old behavioral patterns because that's what always happens right um, but I have to say that it's now been about two months since the ceremonies and uh, my life has shifted um, Besides speaking a way more um, gently to myself and to others, be more compassionate and understanding and um, grounded within my own soul and spirit, I still get angry and mad and sad and whatever at times. But the difference, the difference is that there's this hum in the background that is joy and happiness. And that was never there before, you know being able to feel fucking angry or mad and sad I can be crying but there's still this hum in the background of happiness and joy unbelievable unfucking believable it's amazing there's been lots of little shifts in my life between my family life my work life my personal life um, my friends life like and it's 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 continuing to unfold um it's been such a beautiful journey i highly recommend it to people to try it's not for everyone i'm going to say that right off the bat if you are looking to you know just get a high or like see cool colors and shit like just stay home watch tv um but if you are a seeker of truth if you are into the mystery of life and into the mystery of yourself, I would recommend um, doing Aya because it's deep, man. Um, I gained so much from it. I don't feel called to do really do it again. That might change, but in this moment, if you said, "Hey, let's do it next week," I would say, "No, I'm I'm good. I got what I needed from it, and uh, the reconciliation between nature, my true nature, with plants." Um, with the earth and stuff, it's um, it feels like it's like this. Mind you, coming back was very up and down. You know, you go, it's the integration part. And that's the other half of it. It's like 50% the medicine can help you and the other 50 is you. You have to stay with whatever practice that you have. So for me, it was the yoga meditation. I let that slide for two weeks and I was fucked. Like, just like like so rocked but as soon as i brought that routine back into my life again things started shifting you give yourself that respect that um that you that you deserve you're here for a reason you're here for a reason you're here for a reason you know and make the most of it and don't stress out so much because we all we all made choices in our life we everything was chosen before we got here um, and you chose it 
uh, believe it or not. So um, that's up to, it's up to you to explore that as well. Um, some other things I want to leave you with are just some other cool little things that I wrote. A little bit of Flower of Life and stuff. Mind you, I didn't know what I was writing at the time. Like I just knew that my my hand was moving on the page. I just wrote. If you are gonna do a ceremony coming up, take your journal. You never know. You never know. And some people were like, "How the hell did you have the capacity to to write?" But I don't know. It, it, there's a moment that happened. Like I was hyper um, awake. I was. Uh, it felt like I was in a dream state, but I was awake and hyper just hyper present really and um, you can be like that so gentle so loving like the most patient lover the song is in your heart always listen to music we have all the tools right now it's it's being cemented in my body okay so but when i said it's being cemented into my body was the the, the surgeons that were happening here i felt Lots of healing, like I said, happening in my um, stomach region and stuff. And I felt like I would feel like sick and then it would go away. And I was like, ooh, something's moving around. It sounds weird, but it's like, it sounds weird, but it's like this, the, it felt like a snake moving through my intestines and cleaning everything out. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, it's so beautiful. And I thank uh, Jerry, Brandy, and Jeff for making Arrhythmia possible to help facilitate all of this because without without them, you know, this wouldn't be possible. And I thank Tida and the whole team and like just, they were just amazing, amazing helper helpers. Trust what, uh, trust what you're doing is yes. Trust what you're doing is yes. It's magic. Um, and then release to any way possible. The medicine stays with you once drink from once drank from your heart. That's it. Don't have to do anything. Don't try so hard. Um, the journey is beautiful. Childlike wonder. Choice always. We choose. Um, so much healing going on right now. So for my first journey, I would say the biggest takeaways for me was that. Um, was to be vulnerable and to slow down. I saw how quickly, when everything turned digital, I saw how quick my mind is and like how fast it computes and stuff. So slowing it down a little bit and taking it all in, it would be really uh, wise of me. And also being vulnerable. There's This is me being vulnerable actually right now. Because um, when I'm vulnerable, you're vulnerable too. And I think in vulnerability, we, we're more authentic and we're more real with each other because fuck it, why not, you know, like let's do away with the masks and just be real with each other. Why, like, why not? Why not? Um, and then journey two, the biggest things that I take away is just be me. That's it. Just be me and smile <laughs> and smile. So that's the that's the ayahuasca story right now and it's still unfolding i really feel like i could tap in at any moment and still feel that that medicine and it's epic it's beautiful so if you stuck around for the whole thing thank you so much please 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 send me a message if you have any questions comments anything i would love to hear from you and um yeah if you have anything to offer, um, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, love, love, love. <laughs>